Um, did you guys see this Harriet Tubman credit debit card floating around the internet? It was this black. Um, I don't even want my card to look like that. Apparently, it was a black bank. It was a black owned bank, right? Yeah, it's a black owned bank. Have put up this limited what is it called? edition card. You want to give them a name? It's one United Bank. It's a debit card. It's for people who don't have credit. And no, no. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> 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 I'm just being, <laughs> my bad. They just wanted to create something for Black History Month mm-hmm. and to give you a little bit of pride. Um, so they put okay. uh, Harriet Tubman on there, which I think is a great choice. With the Wakanda. Um, but the issue with the Wakanda, the Wakanda for life, the Wakanda mix is just a little ridiculous. It so, makes so it for those laughable. listening, can you explain what you mean by Wakanda? You know the Wakanda for life, man. Well, you know the Wakanda crossing the hand. So I actually never watched the full movie, so I don't really know exactly how, how the, what, is this significant in the film. It's, but it's, I do that's know that greets. when I see it, that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. What's the name of the guy who plays the Black Panther? Uh, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, he's tired of that shit. You saw him on on the. You saw that picture <laughs> of him and he was doing it. He's like, bro, he can looks I sick stop? of it. Can you, but no, look, he can't. He's coming out with the second one. But right? look, he's yeah. making he, look. They're making they make they're making money off of that joint. Though. I know, I know. But he's making <laughs> hell of money. Well, I mean, I guess my thing is, what? Do you, well, my question is, what do you think about this? Me, as a black Nigerian man, I have no feelings towards this. I wouldn't either. Because I have no connection towards Harriet Tubman. But do you have connect? Like, I don't think you have a connection to Harriet or Wakanda. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a black, and I repeat, as a black Nigerian man who grew up in Nigeria, I have no connection. So, so I li- can I ask you something? Oh, what? Just random. Do you see yourself first as a black man or first <clears throat> as a Nigerian? As a Nigerian first. Nigerian first. You then see, after I didn't Nigerian, know, what? Let me and before what before people next? hear this and say, "Whoa, audacity!" What I mean is, I grew up in Nigeria not knowing I was black, and mm. what I mean not knowing I was black is my skin color wasn't a factor. Okay. I did know. I but that was because you lived among all black yes. people. Yeah. Now, I did know the thing that was a factor was wealth yeah. and other things. So I did know I grew up privileged because yeah. that then became the factor Yeah. and how things were done and where I was coming from. Mm-hmm. So there was no racism, but there was classism. I was about to say, I was yes. wondering if there was classism. There was classism. Mm-hmm. So my experience is different. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I came from a very classist society and even just going back home recently, it's still the same thing. Um, yeah, so what know. do you think yeah. about black history? Well, well actually, so, I, I asked you the question. Okay. I, I want to ask you now. What do you see yourself first as? Um, I don't know. I never really picked myself first off as race. I just okay. picked myself as being a woman first. Okay. And then maybe I'll put some race into it. Okay. So um, a woman and then a black woman. Yeah, I might have say I'm a Floridian, probably. There's like probably a list of things that I would put before being black, but I do, I am aware that I am black. I am (laughs) now too. That's what I was going to say. Now that I'm in the States, I'm aware that I'm a black man. It's not, but it's not like a, it's not a thing. So what do you guys think about, what What do you guys think about Black History Month? So I'm an advocate for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. I believe it's important to just remember your history or even learn something new because every year I think it's important for people when you're celebrating Black History Month to learn something new because it, there's so much more to black people and culture in America outside of slavery. And there's a lot of barriers that have been broken and we just don't like to remember those things. And I think that this is a month that gives you pride. Yeah. Um, just learning about those foundations of what was set in place so that you could be here. So w- let me ask you something. Why do you think people need a month to have pride? I a just month think, dedicated to them. I think that a lot of other times throughout the year, it's for, and it's not just black mm-hmm. culture. I just think it's for different cultures across. <coughs> I only ever hear about black history. Black well, history I mean, and I gay think pride because month. Black, Those are the only two months. I think. <laughs> well, because we are the ones who talk the loudest, right? We're the yeah. ones who talk the loudest and I'm going to say complain, cheer, whatever. I think mm-hmm. we're the loudest. Yeah. I, but I think it's important for all cultures because America is a melting pot. It is. And I just feel that we have this tendency to just kind of whitewash everything Mm -hmm. and we just put everything around what Europeans have done and I just think it's important to highlight those um, achievements that we have but uh, can I ask you something why do we have to do it in one month why can't we do it all year we could do it all year like 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 the way we do for other like American white founders well that's a whole other structural issue I mean why the shortest month too 
Yeah, I just think that's a whole. I even find show. that insulting. They, they actually <laughs> picked the shortest <laughs> month. You know, it actually started yeah. out as a day and then it became a month. Yeah, that's what it. Yeah, right. it started yeah. off a yeah. day. It can become a year. Started off as a week, and it, all of it was really for the black community, in a sense. Mm-hmm. It wasn't necessarily even for white people to learn or any other because that really was black or white, right? So it wasn't necessarily for white people to learn about black culture. It was for black people to learn about themselves and give them pride. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what it was about. Then it became a larger on a larger scope because they're like, okay, so now we're trying to include this diversity and inclusion thing that, you know, you hear all the time and they're like, okay, so for you to understand that we are very similar, we need to let you know about our path Mm -hmm. and how we got here so that you can see how we connect. That's what I would say. But why we can't do it all year? I mean, I feel you should practice it all year. I think it's just a structural thing. Have you ever heard of Daryl Davis? No. Uh, he's this big guy. He's, I think he's like a musician, but he was on one of my pod, one of my favorite podcasts, really? and he was talking about what the Joe Rogan show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 no, but um, he he's this guy that he spent his time um converting KKK members. Mm. You, you, I'm sure you've heard of him Probably. before. He spent his time converting KKK. Daryl Davis, D A R Y L Davis. Oh, he spent, I have seen him. Yeah, you know him. He spent his time converting KK and he's converted like how many? You, can you look up how many? I'm looking. It's like a lot, like mm-hmm. like hundreds. Mm-hmm. Hun- he has literally converted KKK members into like regular upstanding citizens. And he does it. He goes on like tours, goes around the country. Um so he he comes in contact and he's a very very he's a very very outspoken <coughs> steward of the black community. Okay. Um but he did make a point while he was on Joe Rogan. And he said that he thinks Black History Month should not should not be a thing. It should not be a thing. And and, so and one of the things, one of the reasons why he said it was because he said, you know, we celebrate all these other uh, white pioneers all year long. We talk about them all year long. They're in their they are in the school cur- curriculum yeah. all year long. But that for some reason, Black History Month, what ends up happening is that. Yes, I know that it's it's a chance for people to go out and actually learn about new black people, folks, but it's usually it's the same one. black folks yeah. that we're always learning about. Well, Harriet Tubman, and Rosa and Parks, so that's what MLK. I said that it's important. So I'll say this. And being so a monk, I, yeah. coming from an, an all white school, yeah. from Would kindergarten say, to 11th grade. You said you went to a prep school? I went to a private school. A prep school? Yeah, it is. It was a prep say school. Say the word prep. I'm not saying. <laughs> so we have a thing where she until has a nickname. 11th grade, because my like, that half of my 11th grade year, my 12th grade, I moved to public school. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, and I wanted to because I wanted a different experience, right? Yeah. So throughout school, through my private school days, we didn't. The only black people we learned about are the same ones that you're talking about. His uh, Rosa mm-hmm. Parks and Martin Luther King and and mm-hmm. I actually. As a kid, don't don't know why, but I went searching for different people. Like that's how I found Jackie Robinson and mm-hmm. Daryl Sharp because I was a huge baseball fan. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, but when I got to public school curriculum, I was surprised mm-hmm. that we actually had a breakdown of different, starting from Africa, moving forward to you know slavery, then moving into American Black American culture. But yeah. a lot of schools don't have that. Okay. That's not required part of the curriculum. That's why I'm saying part of, most of the reason why you can't do it every day is because it's structural. There's a yeah. lot of programs here where they're only going to talk about the same five people because they feel like that's safe. Like no one's going to yeah. have a conversation about Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey like that because they don't know what that will do or whatever they think it may do to their and students. In my opinion, what you what happens is when you fix it to a month is you you get stuff like this with this one United Bank is. This is what they come up with. Is well, that's just a mockery. That's uh, just nonsense. This marketing campaign and this fake care. And well, see, I feel like this that is a money grab. Uh, that dilutes know. a lot of what your people are trying to do. It is. It because does because it's 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 silly. It does. Yeah, you're taking some a strong someone that I've always seen as like a strong black and woman who did a, who did something a lot of people have never done. She she. Mm-hmm.